Hi everyone, it's Nicole and I have another layout using the Double Scoop Studio Calico Kit. And this layout took me um, an hour and, or two hours to complete. And I'm showing you some of the pattern papers I'll be using. There's a Pebbles, a uh, Crepe Paper, and Amy Tangerine. And I'm going to use the Pebbles as the background. And then I'm going to be using that sheet, um, Let's Go Be Adventures. I'm just going to use that as an accent. So there's not going to be a lot of pattern paper used on this um, on this layout. And that kind of happens when, when you have that many photos. And the challenge for February on my Facebook group is to go back and scrap some pictures that are at least five, day, five years old. Because... I'm not one that scrapbooks chronologically, but I also um, rarely go back that far. You know, like if there's a trip, like my New York trip was, you know, two years ago, three years ago, I'll scrap that or another trip or, you know, anything that I'll come across, I'll, I'll scrap. But a lot of it, it might not be yesterday's paper, but it's like, you know, September or August of last year's paper like it's not way way back or very recent I you know if I can develop some pictures right away I'll get those done because I'm so excited to have them these are five years old six years old it was our trip to Disney and it was on our favorite ride and um, so what I'm doing is I'm just doing a collage of all the different photos and I'm not putting them all equal so that the only one that's close to four by six is Rafiki and really he has nothing to do with that ride but he kind of has to do with the feel of the page because the title is going to be the same as um, what is on that pattern paper let's go be adventurers because we love to travel it's not just this ride we just love to travel and when actually the the time that we went on this trip we drove to Disney and for us that's 32 hours and it, that wasn't the only thing that happened. The kids had no idea. They thought we were going to my mom which is two hours away to Bathurst and um, they got in the truck or in the van at the time and we started driving and they had to come. I had worked a night shift and they came to pick me up at work and we, we said well you know we're gonna have to we're taking a different way to go to you know Mimail's house because you you pick me up at work because there's two ways to get to her house depending where you leave so anyway here's my son he's it's six years ago so he's seven years old eight years old an hour and a half into the ride he says um this doesn't look like we're going to Mimail's house I don't recognize anything and I and we said well remember we had to take a, a different route okay but we should be in Miramichi now and he, he knew where we should be and this the kid is eight years old right yeah but remember uh, you know yeah but I don't recognize any of these places that we're going by so anyway, he was he was quite inquisitive so uh, and to get to where we needed to go before we could tell them in Woodstock is actually about half an hour longer than getting to my mom's so again, an hour later, he's like, we should be in Bathurst by now. Like, why, why aren't we there? <laughs> so anyway, as we were driving up to the border, uh, we let them know that we were driving to Disney. And uh, so that was, that was quite exciting. So it was, I've always wanted to do that, to, to go on a trip and not let them know about it and just go. So that was my time. My husband couldn't believe that I kept kept it secret for that long but I did because we planned it for a lot of months you know and um, never that they had a clue that we were going they thought we were going to Bathurst um, my husband packed their clothes to you know because it was summer clothes compared to winter clothes <laughs> while they were sleeping that night because they had packed their bags remember like they packed their winter stuff and he kind of took everything out during the night and then and I said don't worry too too much on the way there's always um, um, 
like lots of shopping opportunities that are really uh, cheap. So we'll stop and we'll get them a bit of new stuff. So anyway, so that was probably to me the biggest let's go be adventurers that there was because they had no idea. So while I was telling you about the thing behind these pictures, I added the top and bottom, which was the Let's Go Be Adventures. And then I scalloped the backside of the, the B side of that pattern paper, which is that nice watercolor. And I use my um, big scallop punch. And now I use a strip of score tape that's from ScorePal and I put a strip down at the bottom and it's the only thing that I find that's strong enough to hold ribbon in place so that it doesn't eventually just um, come off. Like I find ATG tape, like it puts it down, but if I go back um, a week or two later and I just tag tug on it a little bit, it rips off. So that was the piece of ribbon that came in the kit. So what I'm doing is I'm just ruffling it. So I'm cutting down or sticking down a piece and then stopping and making a bubble and gluing that bubble close to the other piece of ribbon. And by doing so, it makes a bubble. And then I move ahead a little bit and do another bubble. So then it looks like a riff, ruffle tape. And then once I was all done, I just took my ATG tape and just kind of put tape in behind each of those little ruffles so that the ruffle stays down and doesn't stand right up. And now I'm going to work on my title. I'm going to use those rubber letters from Stu, uh, the, not Stu Calco, Thickers, and it was from Amy Tangerine. And then I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ideology, those little label stickers. And then this is what I, where I decide I had left that last photo untouched because I thought I was going to do my journaling on that spot. And then I decide, no, you know, like this whole thing is a journaling page. So fill that up with another photo and then you can just journal right below the photos and it'll still look okay because it's all journaling page. So it's going to take me a few seconds to line that up. And then I'm just going to trim it down. And to go back to the story of how we told the kids, it didn't quite go as f as well as what we thought we were, it was going to go. Because, you know, when we got close, I said to my daughter, which was, you know, a little older, I said, what's that up there? And she had gone by herself to the States quite a few times too because of her cheerleading for uh, camps and stuff. And she said, that looks like the border, but that doesn't make any sense if we're going to Bathurst because, you know, we're in the same province. And um, so we said, surprise, you know, we're going to Disney, not Bathurst. And my son starts to cry because he wasn't going to see his little cousin <laughs> that was in Bathurst. And I was like, you got to stop crying. We're getting up to the border. They're going to think we kidnapped you. <laughs> so be happy. You can cry after. But it didn't last long. Uh, we crossed over to Olton and we went to the Walmart that's there. And um, I had done a book bag full of games for him and things to do along the way because it's a long ride. Some new DS games and that kind of stuff. So he was tickled pink. And then, um, you know, then he, they started asking how long before we get there and, and that kind of stuff. But it didn't have to wait for months. And that was my thing. I didn't want them to wait for months. So while I was telling that part of the story, I got some straws from Simon Says Stamps. And um, at first I took the pink ones, but then I figured that the black ones would, black and white would work better. And I put them through my cuddle bug to, mu to crunch them. But these ones here, and I got some at Target too, but those ones I don't know if I would need to put them through the cuddle bug, but this one's here. And when I got to the black one, I just crushed them with my fingers. And that was enough. And then I cut out a pinwheel. What you do is you cut at four, all the four different corners. And then you pick a corner and you start and you fold it over to the center. Don't fold it flat because you want some rounded. And then you skip every second after that. And then I glued an enamel dot in the middle. And that made my little pinwheel. Then I took my... 
Okay, the camera had stopped, but I had kind of seen it frozen, so I stopped it right away. So what I was saying, then I took my camera stamp and some Hero Arts ink, and I just stamped it directly on the vellum, and then I took my heat gun and dried it. I don't end up using it on this page because I can't get it to work with the pinwheels, but I'm going to keep them and um, use them on another layout. So I, like I said, I just wanted some straws to add to the pinwheels because I just thought it was just added dimension to the pinwheel so that because um, most time when you have a little pinwheel you have a little stick to hold it to you know to hold it to the wind or whatever the case may be and I, the second and now I'm going to take my butterfly punch and I'm going to punch out some butterflies and basically that bright pink paper that is the only thing that I used it for it was to make the pinwheels and also um for the butterflies and I try to position the butterflies too so that you can see enough of the word that you can the bigger butterflies anyway the small butterflies it's just dots um, but the bigger butterflies uh, one has perfect in the middle and the other one has amazing and I'm going to take some pink ink and I'm just going to distress them a little bit and then I'm going to put some uh, stamping up dimensional in behind the wings and it's just going to give them a little bit of pop and then I'm going to put some twine and make the trail behind the butterfly and what I used to put my like the base of my embellishment this time I used a doily and I'm trying to I'm a huge doily fan as you know if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time and but I'm trying to use different things as my background f or yeah the background to to kind of ground my embellishments but once in a while I just I gotta use the doily again but you'll see me more using stickers bigger stickers cut them in half and kind of or use a pattern paper and cut a half circle from the pattern paper or I use three by four cards or four by six cards from the, uh, any project life kits that would coordinate so I'm trying to mix it up so that it's not all always all the same but the doily is you know probably my favorite so I wanted something else on the doily to help ground the the element so I did punch out a piece of paper and then I just cut a rectangle from that word um, pattern paper and it just just different words it says favorite um, timeless yes please you know like just different words that you can kind of see so and I look down for a second I'm not sure exactly where I went so I'm just gonna keep working on the embellishments and I'm gonna put the pinwheel there I didn't know if I wanted to put uh, that badge that we got in this month's kit it says take flight but I'm gonna end up putting at the top of the layout so now I'm ready to glue down my title and it's just gonna be with the top the top um, embellishment cluster and there's going to be three clusters on this layout but the third one is going to be very very small it's going to be a medium-sized butterfly some twine and a star and that's it because I'm going to end up putting three little stars from freckle fawn the little white glittery ones on top of um, some of those acetate one that came in the kit and they're kind of a pinkish red and this pattern paper is pink and red so it went with the page really well and this pink um, twine my friend came to work one day and she says oh Michael has these really uh, cool twines and they're only a dollar fifty and I think it might be close to the pink that you're looking for so right after work I went and there was one left and I bought it and it's probably the closest to that pink that I love from Doodlebug. I put it side by side and it's a tinge, a tinge darker, 
but it's close enough that I, you know, I'm going to go with it. So I was happy that I, I got to go and grab one of those. And then I'm going to put that take flight badge right next to that pinwheel. And then I'm going to add those transparency stars that I said that came in the kit. And then a couple of the freckled fawn. They're so cute. They're kind of um glittery white star. And I'm going to put them in three spots. I kind of um, distressed some enamel dots. And I don't end up using them. I must have forgot about them after I, I distressed them. Because they're not on the layout. But I'm sure I'll use them somewhere else. Now I'm going to use the Heidi Swap Primrose. And I'm going to put the speckles or the dots on the page. And that's the only one that I'm going to put on the layout. And usually I like to put three, but this time I only did one. And now I'm going to show you some close-ups of every, um, every cluster. And that's it. The page is done. So thanks for watching. Bye.